Hello friends, welcome back. In this tutorial, we will study about priority scheduling. So, what is this priority scheduling? It is a CPU scheduling algorithm. So, what happens in this case? A priority is associated with each process. Right? And the process which has the highest priority CPU will be allocated to that process, right? CPU will be allocated to the process which is having the highest priority, right? So what happens, uh, suppose uh, there are uh, more than one processes and they are having same priority. Then what happened in that case, uh, the process which has requested the CPU first, that process will be allocated the CPU first. Suppose there are three processes, P1, P2 and P3, these three, three processes they have same priority right then what happen the cpu will be allocated to that process first which has made the cpu request first right which has made the request for cpu first that process will be allocated the cpu first among these three processes right now what happens generally the priority of processes are indicated by a fixed range of numbers like 0 to 250 right so what happens generally what happens uh, priorities of processes are indicated by fixed range of numbers so here there are two possibilities right in some systems what happens low numbers represents low priority in some systems what happens low numbers represents high priority right so suppose uh, the priorities of processes are indicated by fixed range of numbers this 0 to 250 right so if uh, uh, in the system low numbers represents low priority in that case what happened the process whose priority is indicated by 0 that process has the lowest priority right and in the system in which low numbers represents high priority in that case what happened the process whose uh, priority is indicated by number zero right that process will have the highest priority right now now consider these five processes p1 p2 p3 p4 and p5 right they have arrived at time zero this is their cpu bus time right and uh, this is their priority right their priority is indicated by these numbers right uh, process p1 priority is 3 process p2 priority is indicated by number 1 process p3 priority is indicated by number 4 right so in this case what uh, we will consider we will consider that lower number represents higher priority right low number represents high priority so here among these numbers you can see that the lowest one is 1 right lowest number is 1 right and it indicates the priority of process p2 right so it means the process p2 has highest priority so the cpu will be allocated to process p2 first right the bus time of uh, process p2 is 1 right so after one unit of time the process p2 will release the cpu right now see these remaining processes p1 p3 p4 and p5 right their priorities are indicated by these numbers right among these numbers the lowest number is 2 right and it indicates the priority of process p5 right so among uh, these remaining processes this process p5 has the highest priority so the cpu will be allocated to process p5 so at time one cpu is allocated to process p5 the bus time of uh, process p5 is 5 so after five units of time right it means at time six this process p5 will release the cpu now among these uh, remaining processes right you can see their uh, priority right so in uh, these uh, three numbers the lowest one is 3 right and it indicates the priority of process p1 right 
so the process p1 has the highest priority among the remaining processes so at time 6 cpu will be allocated to process p1 bus time of uh, process p1 is 10 so after 10 units of time process p1 will release the cpu see uh, process p1 will release the cpu at time 16 right so now the only two processes are left p3 and p4 right uh, priority of process P3 is indicated by number 4, right? And uh, priority of process uh, P4 is indicated by number 5. So, lowest among these two is 4, right? It indicates the priority of process P3. So, process P3's priority is higher than that of process P4. So, CP will be allocated to process P3, right? Uh, bus time of process p3 is 2 so after 2 units of time right it means at time 18 process p3 will release the cpu now only one process is left that is p4 so at time 18 cpu will be allocated to process p4 the bus time of uh, this uh, process p4 is 1 so after 1 unit of time process p4 will release the cpu at time 19 process p4 will release the cpu right now these uh, all processes have arrived at time 0 right now see this process p2 it was uh, allocated the cpu at time 0 so waiting time of process p2 is 0 right now see this uh, process p5 right cpu is allocated to this uh, process p5 at time 1 right but it uh, arrived at time 0 so its waiting time is 1 right waiting time of process p5 is 1 similarly cpu is allocated to process p1 at time 6 but uh, this process p1 has arrived at time 0 so its waiting time is 6 right similarly the waiting time of process p3 is 16 right waiting time of process p4 is 18 right so what is the average waiting time in this case In this case, the average waiting time is 0 plus 1 plus 6 plus 16 plus 18 divided by 5, right? And it is equal to 8.2, right? So, average waiting time in this case is 8.2 units of time. Now, see what happens to this uh, priority scheduling algorithm. It can be preemptive. or it can be non preemptive suppose there is a process p1 right and the cpu is allocated to this process p1 right now suppose a new process has arrived in ready queue right that process is p2 and the priority of this process p2 is higher than the priority of currently running process p1 right then what happens if the priority scheduling algorithm is preemptive in this case what happens cpu will be taken away from the process p1 and it will be given to process p2 right if the priority scheduling algorithm is non preemptive then what will happen this uh, cpu will not be taken away from process p1 right this process p1 uh, will be allowed to execute and uh, finish its uh, cpu bust once uh, its uh, cpu bust is uh, completed then it will release the cpu and then cpu can be allocated to process p2 right the major problem uh, with the priority scheduling algorithm is indefinite blocking or starvation as we know that uh, in uh, priority scheduling algorithm cpu is allocated to that process which has the highest priority right so what is this indefinite blocking or starvation uh, what is the problem of indefinite blocking actually what happens uh, this priority scheduling algorithm it can leave some uh, low priority processes to wait indefinitely right uh, what happens in a heavily loaded computer system a steady stream of high priority processes can prevent a low priority process from ever getting the cpu right 
so this problem is called starvation or indefinite blocking solution of uh, this indefinite blocking or starvation is aging right aging is a technique right uh, in this technique what happens uh, the process uh, which is waiting right a low priority process which is waiting after fixed amount of time the priority of that uh, waiting process is increased gradually right for example after every 15 minutes the priority of a waiting process will be increased by one right so in this case what happens after a particular amount of time the priority of uh, the process right which has been waiting will become highest right and then at that time cpu will be allocated to that waiting process right so this technique of uh, gradually increasing the priority of a process which has been waiting uh, for uh, a long time is called aging